How is anyone with a disability or an intellectual disability intellectual going to know what that <laughs> word is? And what it means. Though. And what it means. Have a bash at it, Beck. What is, what is it? What's the word? Je, je is the, uh, I can't even pronounce. <laughs> je, jing, je, jingle? Jingle? <laughs> this word right here, I just can't. Je, se, je. <laughs> Yeah, this one right here. Be quiet. <laughs> I just cannot understand. What is that supposed to mean? The, the We're talking about the format. The top bit of the format is in, um, I say in 80, and then it goes down to like 24. It needs to be all one-sided format one size format. Why is that? Because people that can't read or have need glasses or um, that um, can't read, go from one big print to a, a little print. Did you find that uh, an issue, Beck? Yeah, I did because I feel like I have to go up a little closer just to read that. Right, okay. So, yeah, I can understand this top bit, but when it comes to this down here, it's just to the end. Okay. It's and you're also so can you point, to be can you point to that bit again? It's here. Okay. It's just way too small. It should be like all the same size. Uh, okay. So, yeah. And, and you were, what else? You were saying something else about how to improve it back when I came uh, Having like an audio thing that, so it reads for you because not, not everyone can read it. Mm. And having like an audio thing read it for you would mm. help, I reckon. We just clicked on the Easy English to see if we could understand it a little bit better. Mm -hmm. There is still jargon. Mm -hmm. But we also found out there some words are in written in bold mm -hmm. to explain what the words mean. Mm -hmm. There is there is a list of, of words on page 29, but apparently there's 29 pages in the Easy English. How, that, how do you feel about that? That's too many. Too much. <laughs> too much. Too many pages for a person yeah. that can't read or write properly. Exactly. understand um, it needs to be less jargon more plain English the important skills and measurements and managing outcomes <laughs> for people with a disability if we can't measure the we can't measure the outcomes because we don't understand the measures so how can they say they're going to measure the outcomes when we don't know the outcomes or the measurements of the outcomes? I'm the representative for the All Abilities in South West Victoria. I'm working on the IRC and posting up videos and photos. The next video is about is Mandy Baxter talking about the IRC. So I'm Mandy Baxter and I'm from the National Disability Insurance Agency. Um, and I work in the what's called information linkages and capacity building, which is known as ILC. It's a big part of the National Disability Insurance Scheme. The reason why I work with an ILC is this. I think it is, and I'm very passionate 
I've got a fire in my belly, so to speak. I've got a passion about ensuring, making sure that all people with disability are included in everyday life and get the opportunity to create for themselves that opportunity, but the rest of the way in which we interact or, or communicate with um, our world changes too. Because sometimes people's thinking about disability is not quite perhaps where it needs to be. <laughs> and that's where I see ILC coming into play. What about accessing buildings and transport and the ILC? We across Australia have a really big challenge ahead of us to ensure all councils, all government, state and federal, so right throughout, and not just government bodies, um, corporate bodies, um, every, you know, every community organisation. And that's a really... It should be already happening, and in many ways it is. I'm starting to see some really good examples of um, accessible communities. Um, Will ILC fund companies and corporations? ILC can't be responsible for all of that. We, we, we couldn't win the race if that, if that was... We, 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 one, we don't have enough money to do it, but it wouldn't... So, what we would be doing is working with councils or working with groups to ensure they are thinking about how to, not just thinking, but there's some action behind changing the way in which their environment needs to be more accessible. Because it needs to be council's responsibility to put in a ramp or put into a marble loo. So it's about walking about coming together to do that and sharing the responsibility. Are we there yet? No. If you looked at some of the ILC activities that are currently funded, it is about a partnership, but there are some big players on board. The ILC hasn't funded those big organisations like the AFL, but they have starting to come on board and talk about inclusion. And I, you know, fantastic, thank you. So they're talking about inclusive clubs. They're not pinpointing disability. They're just creating, they're talking about that we should be creating a space for all people with all abilities. Current application timelines are too short and looking at the way in which the competitive grants program needs to change, particularly for user input. Does ILC fund paid staff? There, there, there is capacity within um, ILC projects, activities, to have um, funding paid employees. So you've got a lot of experience then in judging what makes a good support worker. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell me some of the, the things that you think make a good support worker? That they are able to communicate with people with intellectual disability, uh, listen to the voices of people with intellectual disability, um, ask questions, uh, respond to issues that people with disability have. Colin, can you tell me a little bit Briefly about Reinforce. Yeah, Reinforce is the is a self advocacy organisation for people with intellectual disability. Run by what do you think is the sort of what are the major mistakes that support workers make? I think that one of the mistakes is that they don't listen to people with intellectual disability, or that don't listen to people with disability. The main issue I think that we've had is not being able to have our say 
um, not being listened to. And if there's a problem, you know, if, if I, if, for an example, I want to go, I think that uh, no institution should be built, and you think that they should be built. Okay, come and tell me your reasons why. I'll tell you my reasons why they shouldn't. Let's discuss and have a little discussion about it. So and when Reinforce decides to do a project, mm. are they always about rights? Is that I think it is, because a couple of projects I remember, it's the No Strangers here, where we're talking about rights, and we made five, dip, uh, five songs, and basically they were about rights. So what's the main aim? For reinforce, like what? Why does reinforce exist? What do they want? To what make want? sure that the rights of people with intellectual disability are upheld in the same way as anyone else, and making sure that people hear about what their rights are from people and hear what people with disability are thinking and feeling and wanting and needing. So, how do you decide what projects to to apply for? Something that had happened, or something being spoken to me, and oh you know, well, we need to do something about, we need to have a, a project. So they may have my home, my rights. Uh, I was somewhere and something came up and, crikey, we've got to do something about this. People in in uh, community residential units, then their voices aren't getting heard. They don't know about all this stuff and they don't know what the rights are, so we need to do something. Anything else that you want to say to help make support workers better at their job? I think just one thing, please, Respect our opinion, respect our ideas. Talk to me about what it is that you're trying to do or want, wanting to do. Please make sure that if, when we're responding, if it's something that you can't do or is too hard or whatever, please don't flub us off, fog us off. Please don't, oh, okay, well, I'll, I'll make a note of that and I'll get to it as soon as I possibly can. Please come back and tell us why you can't do it or why it's too hard or why is it not important. Don't, you know, our voice is as much important as yours. I just started to realise that there's this very fine line with support workers and sometimes it's really, really hard to, to know when to not cross that. But also, you have to respect our opinion and our voice, so do we have to respect your opinion and your voice. I'm the representative for the All Abilities Advocacy Group in the South West Victoria. I live in Cobden, it's a small country town. It's about 45 minutes from Waterville. I've been involved with South Advocacy for six years now. The good thing about the group is that we have guest speakers come in and talk to us, talk about the issues that are happening within our community here and how to address those issues. Um, transport, public transport, housing and employment and services. Denoes, um, to me, it's, uh, at first it was very slow, I couldn't understand it um, because a lot of it being in jargon. Um, but I found that it took, a, it, just, it took a while to get the help that I needed. Her. 